Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to War in the Pacific, Admiral's Edition, our Let's Play series, playing against Hartwig, a 14 plus year veteran of this game. Uh, in today's episode, we are going to be looking at the May 2nd replay and the May 3rd orders, and we can see the turn starts off with us uh, bombarding some Japanese forces on Savi Island. Uh, and we will see, I assume there will be more bombardments uh, both at uh, Midway and further bombardments at Savi would be my assumption. Uh, there's our Midway bombardment going here. We've got the battleship Oklahoma uh, dropping some pain on the Japanese defenders uh, there. It is still the night phase here. Uh, we've also got the Nevada in action and the Colorado in this task force. So we'll go ahead and fast forward through that and you can see 66 Japanese casualties inflicted, seven non-combatant squads destroyed, two engineers, and four guns. So I'm assuming that's not an infantry section. That's probably a uh, like an engineer unit that they're bombarding here, um, which would be preferable for them to hit the combat troops. I guess the guns matter. Uh, meanwhile, the Japanese are also bombarding Batavia, uh, and uh, we're you know we're seeing an increased tempo of Japanese shore bombardments here. 354 Allied casualties, two uh, combat squads disabled, 14 non-combatants destroyed, and an engineer. Pretty heavy fire. It looks like they actually hit the industry here. So it says 387 fires, one manpower hit. I'm curious how that impacts the industry there, because I believe there's refineries or industry at that particular base. So they'll have to repair that when they eventually take it. Um, now, it would be better if it was an oil-producing facility. Unfortunately, Batavia doesn't produce oil. Uh, but if it did, that would be great. Meanwhile, the battleships Warspite, Mississippi, New Mexico, and Idaho join in a second bombardment here uh, at Midway Island. Uh, looks like maybe, I'm not sure if the unit we were shooting at before was destroyed or not. Um, my hunch is that they were because we didn't, it looks like they didn't target any Japanese forces there. They just targeted the base. Uh, eight airbase hits, three supply hits, four runway hits, 13 port hits, and two port supply hits. Um, so doing considerable damage to the base itself. An additional bombardment here with some heavy cruisers coming into Midway as well. The Vincennes, the San Francisco, the Indianapolis. So we got some 8-inch guns uh, firing on the Japanese here. Um, and again, no enemy uh, force hit here. We didn't actually damage any of the Japanese troops that might still remain there. It just hit the base again. So two more port supply hits, two more airbase supply hits, 12 runway, five port, and six airbase hits. So uh, I would imagine the base is in pretty rough shape at this point, uh, although I'm not sure how strong the defending infantry, if they have any, is. I thought it was a naval guard unit, but maybe I'm getting that confused with Savi. Um, so we'll see. We have recon flights flying over Midway um, with our spotter planes, P. Warner. And you can actually see that in some of the bombardments, they say that, you know, this spotting plane is spotting for the uh, for the battleship there. A Japanese submarine just torpedoed a coastal mine sweeper tender something uh, near Rangoon. This is basically a worthless ship. Uh, they wasted two torpedoes on it uh, and probably sank it. Although it looked like in that graphic, the ship was floating. Yep, they did sink it. Sorry, Dorman. Ensign Dorman R. Hope you're not related to uh, the uh, Admiral Dorman. Okay. Fast forward through some of this recon stuff. We've also got some Japanese fighters sweeping over, over Chungking. That's kind of a new development. Additionally, rather than sweeping over Mole Mine this term, it looks like they swept over Rangoon with some Oscars. Well, they're not actual mine layers, P. Warner. They're mine. They're basically mine sweepers. They, the ship that was sunk is primarily just a port tender. Where basically, if you have those operating in a port hex, they will maintain the minefield, but they definitely do not lay more mines. Those are much more valuable ships. Meanwhile, you can see here that the Japanese also swept over Chungking with thirty zeros. So that's like fifty enemy aircraft sweeping over Chungking this turn. Meanwhile, we also have a pretty coordinated bombardment of Batavia here with 30 
well, actually over 50 fighter escorts, 15 zeros and 39 Oscars, and then 16 Sally's, 17 Lilies, and three Anne's. We haven't really seen this level of coordination from Japanese air attacks and in size and impact since I want to say the early days of the war where um, where XTRG was still in charge. We never really saw a large scale bombing uh, or even fighter sweeps by pretty much either Lieutenant Rainbow Slash or Lodric. Uh, so it seems like Hartwig has done a good job of reconstituting his air forces forward and using them for striking uh, fear into the hearts of the allies here because that was a well-coordinated strike with over 50 escorts coming in with over 30 bombers um, I think that that shows a, a level of uh, perhaps attention to detail or competence that we haven't seen uh, in a while in, in some of the recent turns I, I don't it could be because previous opponents felt they didn't have the strength because XTRG did take a fair bit of casualties in his bomber formation over Malaya and also over the Philippines. So perhaps the previous players just didn't feel they had the bomber strength, but we can certainly see that uh, Hartwig is concentrating his air forces and doesn't seem afraid to use them. We still get a fair amount of these small scattered attacks, but with over fi 50 fighters sweeping over Chungking, a uh, squadron sweeping over Rangoon, uh, and then also simultaneously those air attacks over Batavia, the Japanese air arm is getting a lot more aggressive, it would seem. Okay. So we've got 54 of our Dauntlesses and 18, S 18 SBD-2s, 54 SBD-3s, one damage. These are coming off the Hornet toward Midway. Now, these guys did attack the Japanese soldiers on the base, so it looks like one squad destroyed, eight disabled. Uh, so I'm guessing that's of the... Uh, Probably the naval, the 53rd Naval Guard. Uh, so doing a little bit of damage to them. Hopefully our next bombardment uh, targets them. Meanwhile, we've got some bombers attacking the Japanese at Savi. Uh, some Dauntlesses and B-17s. Um, not a ton of damage being done to the Japanese, but at least keeping their heads down. You can see here multiple raids coming in here. Fairly high sortie rate for our two-engine and four-engine bombers coming out of Pago Pago. Not doing a lot of damage on that second raid there, but again, hopefully at least disruption is, is ticking up on the on the Japanese. We do have a Marine Regiment, which has been unloading at Savi. Uh, it's not fully unloaded yet, but it is getting there. I think we'll probably launch our attack on Savi next turn. Okay. Another fighter sweep over Chung King. Another 27 Oscars there. No, I am not. Uh, XZ. Okay. All right, so we've got some ASW work in India. Steve TCG, thank you very much for the resub. Appreciate the support. Eight months now. We almost have a Twitch baby. One more month. Have I played Age Odds American Civil War 2? Have I played it? Maybe. A long time ago. I was asked if I was interested in doing a, a series as a collaboration uh, with ACW 2. Uh, and I am open to the idea, but it's going to take me a little bit of time to get up to speed on that game. I, I would also rather finish my Strategic Command series first. Okay, some more troops unloading at Savi. I don't know if we got the whole regiment unloaded yet or not, but I think we'll attack either way next turn. Japanese bombardment at Batavia. Okay. Um, all right, so 31 Japanese casualties on that bombard bombardment, 52 allied. Meanwhile, another bombardment at Clark Field by the Japanese. They didn't do any damage to us, which is just absolutely mind-boggling to me, the fact that we haven't taken any damage. Now, I'm sure he's doing this in such a methodical way that when he does attack, he'll just overrun us real fast. We'll see. I don't have, like, any supply left either, so... Um, but looks like Christmas Islands, Airfield to three, Molmon Fortifications to two. Those will be nice um, things to occur. 
Bastion Batavia. Well, we're trying, but we're getting hit with a lot of naval bombardments, so that's going to slowly tick us up. I believe our supply this turn is around 40,000, so we'll have to see how badly those bombardments hurt it. Okay, some RAF units arriving in Aden. And let's jump in. I am looking forward to Vicky 3 Lance. I haven't seen a date yet for it, but whenever it does come out, I'm sure I'll stream the hell out of it. I don't know if a lot of it will go on my YouTube channel. The uh, Paradox games tend to not do very well on my YouTube channel, and I think that's mostly because there are some gigantic channels on YouTube who play Paradox games. So it's hard for me to, to get my stuff noticed amongst the mountains of other stuff that uh, that is played there. But I have done pretty well when I've streamed it on my Twitch channel. Actually, uh, a big part of why this channel got uh, it's uh, became a Twitch partner uh, was a combination of CK3 and then also War on the Sea. So those two games specifically are, are the real reason I was able to push up over the threshold and stay there until I kind of stopped streaming for a while because my daughter was born. So um, I do plan to stream uh, CK or Vicky 3. Um, of all the Paradox games out there, I would say that's probably the one that interests me the most. That's the era that interests me the most. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty excited for it. Hey, Wingling. Good to see you. We played in the Hell Let Loose event um, together. I don't think we interacted at all, but uh, I was in the Hell Let Loose event with uh, in, in the tank with Classy. All right, so let's take a look here. We are... Our bombardment task force is hit midway. It's only one unit left. It's only about 1,200 troops and eight guns. So it's, it's, at least according to Intel, it's pretty weak. We have our bombardment task forces here at um, midway. They have rearmed off of the AKEs in port there, but they've used all their op points this turn. So I don't know that they'll make it. Oh, they haven't even reloaded yet. They just, they used all their op points on fuel. Ugh. All right, well, lo those guys aren't going to bombard this turn, then. They've still got to draw more ammo. The cruisers should be good. They have uh, much greater speed. It takes less um, time to reload their 8-inch guns versus 14-inchers, so they should be good to bombard. At least we'll keep the pressure up that way. And then... It looks like the Nevada... Well, those are the two inches, but yeah, it looks like the um, the other battleship task force also rearmed, and they still have some op points, so we should keep the pressure up on Midway and bombard again this turn. The other battleship group will probably bombard the following turn. We're getting pretty close to being ready to land our troops. You can see here we've got Task Force uh, 283 with its APs and AKs with its base forces are about to arrive at Curry. We're not going to unload anyone at Curry but we are going to sort of stage out of this atoll. We also have the second of the infantry battalions here. The second 298th is just, it will arrive this turn. And then the um, first 298th will probably take another two days to get to Midway. We're not going to send them to Curry. They will meet with the other, ta the other task forces at Midway so we can unload sooner rather than later. And then we have loaded up the third 298th, which we used to land on Curry a little while ago. We've loaded them back up onto these fast destroyer transports, and they will also participate in the landing. So we'll have two uh, battalions coming from Curry Island. We'll have one coming directly from Hawaii. They'll converge on Midway Island and unload essentially a full regiment of infantry to go up against the Japanese uh, troops there. <laughs> nice. All right, um, let's see here. Let's take a look. I knew we mowed down a lot of infantry, but my situational awareness wasn't wasn't great as a commander. That was like the second time I'd ever commanded a tank. Um, all right, so Rangoon, we have 68% uh, of the way to level four forts. Airfields at six, going to seven. Mole Mine is up to level two defense or two forts, so that'll be nice to go along with all these uh, Commonwealth divisions here. We've got the 7th Armored Brigade, the 7th Australian Division, and then we've got a Burma Division, an India Division, and a British Division there, all told about 1,800 assault value in those units. 
No indication of the Japanese moving forward here yet. We did get swept, so the Japanese had a fighter sweep over Rangoon. Um, so we could try and potentially ambush those guys. I think we'll wait a day or two just to see what develops to see if they start bombing us there. The airfield is big enough that the Japanese would really have to bring in a ton of bombers to shut it down quickly. And they only have, according to Intel, about 60 bombers at Bangkok. We don't see anything at Chiang Mai. So I don't want to like get drawn into a fighter-only contest and lose a lot of my strength until it's clear he's going to make a bombing initiative. I think it's more likely that he makes a play for Chungking, where we do have some fighters, but not nearly enough and not of nearly high, high enough quality to counter any kind of Japanese push there. We have 11 P-40s of the H-81A3 variant. These are the planes that were in the Flying Tigers. They've transferred to some Chinese squadrons here. The experience levels of these squadrons also not very good. We've got two above 50 and the rest are all 44 or below, some all the way down to 25. So these guys are really going to be, you know, sitting ducks if it comes to a battle there. We could surge some fighters in from Burma or India, but honestly, I'd rather just let them take their, their chance at bombing, uh, bombing Chungking. A fair number of fighters could be destroyed, but they're pretty much low quality stuff. Um, let's see what else we have going on here. The bombardment at Clark field supplies still pretty desperate, getting worse there. We still have about 1500 assault strength. No one's like starved out of their AV yet. None of the good units, the units that have zero already had zero. Some of the base forces are taking a licking. The uh, engineer regiment here is is considerably below strength. So some of our, I think our engineer units seem to be the ones getting targeted more by these bombardments than our infantry, which is interesting. This game is called War in the Pacific, Admiral's Edition, More India. It is definitely not a game for everybody, but it is a game about World War II and the Pacific Theater of Operations. It goes all the way from sort of the western tip of India at Karachi to the U.S. West Coast. That's the size of the map. Each one of these hexes is a 40 by 40 mi mile grid. It is a hex-based war game, um, and it is a turn-based war game. But the thing I like about it is it's turn-based, but it's a WeGo setup. So what that basically means is both sides issue their orders, and then it you know the turn resolves simultaneously. So each day is, is one combat resolution, and then you see multiple phases throughout that day. So you have a night phase, you have an AM phase, a PM phase, and so you have multiple phases, and that allows a really, I think, accurate depiction of the way that recon works in naval combat in World War II. You know, your, your carrier spotter planes go out, they try and find the enemy. If they do, the AI is intelligent enough, based on what your standing orders are, to line up airstrikes and launch those on the same day. Um, and so it's, I think it gives a really good depiction of the cat and mouse nature of World War II, but it is incredibly detailed. Again, like, let's take a look at Batavia here. This is a game that lists every single unit, basically, of a battalion size or larger for anti-aircraft units, for engineer units that support aviation, for armored units, for infantry units, for engineer units that are, are primarily assigned to, like, protecting an individual base, but not, like, out there active fighting. Um, you've got infantry divisions or uh, infantry regiments. Wait a minute. I have an Australian division at Batavia. I don't remember deploying them there. Huh? Oh, wait, this is the eighth, right? These guys, I think originally went to Singapore, but we diverted them. I was, I was getting them confused with the seventh, which I believe is in Pegu. No, they're not. Where are they? Okay, now I'm a little confused here. We've got... Does anybody remember what... What are the really... Those weren't... Those only had 50 experience, so they can't be the really good units that come from North Africa. Um, the Americal Division, by the way, is unloaded at... Uh, at Sydney. I'm just going to use the... Um, bases. Where's my goddamn ground? Here it is. Okay. AV. Oh my 
god, we have so many units. Oh, screw that. Filter. All units. Filter out nationalities. Go to Australia. Go with AV. Yeah, okay. So the 7th Division is in Charters Towns in the Philippine, er, in uh, Australia. And they're one of the Desert Rats Division there. 72 experience, 99 morale. So they came directly from fighting Rommel. The 7th Division also, these guys are in Molmun. Um, and these guys also came from the desert. Although their experience is not as good. They're at 59 um, so I believe they also came from North Africa, but perhaps less experience. And then we have a number of these Australian divisions, which are really just sort of, um, I guess you would call them like home guard type divisions. Like most of these, the second division here, oh, well, actually, no, they upgraded to AIF. So they got better squads, but they started off with militia here. So like the fourth division also upgraded. Jeez, I didn't realize I'd gotten so many of these guys off of militia units. Do they... Are they all switched off? I know I still have militia troops. Well, I guess if Oaken has been working some, some miracles because he's been doing a lot of the logistics and sort of back end, like pool management stuff, some of the busy work for the game for me. And so it looks like most of our troops have massively upgraded their quality. All these guys used to be militia troops, but now it seems like most of them have upgraded to 1942 infantry Australian sections. So so that's good news for the combat effectiveness of our Australian troops. I don't know where we got all those squads from, though. I didn't think we had that many sitting in wait. In any event. Um, okay, so what are the other things we want to do before we move on? Uh, Savi, we have unloaded the 8th Marine Regiment. Uh, so we've got 79 squads ready, 21 disabled. So most of the unit is unloaded. That's 100 squads out of a total of 102. So almost all of our infantry is ashore. Good deal of our light and heavy machine gun units, some of our engineer squads, some of our support stuff, pack howitzers, 105 millimeter howitzers. These guys are ready to rock and roll. They've got an assault value of 113. They've prepped for Savi up to 60%, and they've landed there are still some troops on the transports here in this amphibious task force, uh, but I believe it's probably mostly the heavier stuff. You can see a fair about a bit of support and motorized support still here. A couple of engineers on that transport, support and motorized on the other transport, and then we've got some anti-aircraft guns, some 37 millimeter anti-tank guns, and support and motorized on the other transport. So basically no fighting troops left on these transports, just some heavy and support equipment. So I think that means we're ready for us to go ahead and launch the attack at Savi. Uh, so with those troops unloaded. Now we could do a shock attack or we could do a deliberate attack. A shock attack would increase the likelihood of us having a better uh, uh, or a higher total die roll, if you will. But it also risks disaster, which could result in them being destroyed. Deliberate attack allows you to take things a little bit more slowly um, and, and burn through the enemy a little bit more slowly. I think deliberate attack here in this case is probably the best option, so we will go with that uh, for our assault at Savi. I think it will fall next turn, uh, and we'll we'll see you know what happens there. Um, I already looked at the situation in Midway at Midway. Uh, if we take a look at our situation with our aircraft in India, we've got a whole bunch of aircraft for deployed to uh, Calcutta. Actually, over 380 aircraft of those 380, 263 are fighters, 207 are ready. Uh, we've got a couple of Buffalo Wildcat squadrons. We've got an absolutely massive Wildcat. I would call this a group and not a squadron. They're not VMF. They'd be like a an entire fighter group here with over 70 aircraft, or they will have over 70. They've got 67 right now. Um We've also begun building up our B-17s at Mandalay. So we've got, I want to say like 30, 25 it looks like, B-17s at Mandalay here. Almost all ready for combat as well. I think we have a few at um, uh, Chittagong as well. So we've got about 11 of them there, mostly repairing a few of them in one ready group. And then we also have, I want to say like two B-17s or three B-17s still at Batavia, but with the bombardments going on there, I'm not sure they'll ever get repaired. This one is an estimated delay of 11 days to be repaired. 
And this guy has estimated delays for both of these tomorrow. So if they get repaired by tomorrow, then we'll fly those two out of there if they're not destroyed in the continuing Japanese bombardments. How many carriers do I have in the service? Well, we've got two carrier groups. We've got the Hornet off Midway, and then we've got the rest of our carriers at Bombay. Um, so we've got a task force with three or two American carriers, the Saratoga in Yorktown and the British carrier Indomitable. And then we have another task force uh, with the Lexington Enterprise Formidable. So we've got five American fleet carriers. Hornet is over by Midway. The other four are in India. We've got two British fleet carriers, the Formidable and the Indomitable. Um, and then we also have a eighth or ninth carrier on the way in from uh, South Africa. Uh, that is the illustrious, along with the battle cruiser Repulse, which was not sunk at Singapore. She was uh, repaired. We were able to get her out of there before she was sunk. And uh, she is uh, coming back fully repaired with the illustrious as an escort. We also have the battleship uh, Prince of Wales, which was likewise not sunk off of uh, the uh, North African, not North African, off the Malay coast. Um, she is currently in the process of getting ready to transit back to England to be repaired, uh, but we are trying to get her systems damage down um, and maybe get her up to a level two cruise speed so we can make the transit a little bit, a little bit more safely. So we've got, what, that gives us three British fleet carriers. We also have the Hermes, which doesn't really have an air wing, but she's kind of around. She's a light carrier. Um, so in theory, we have five American fleet carriers, three British fleet carriers, one light carrier. And then we also do have ships that are coming online uh, soon. Uh, so we've got, um, I want to say there's another American carrier, the Long Island. The first escort carrier comes on in 18 days. I think she can have up to 16 aircraft on her. She's basically a jeep carrier and then after that the next carrier is in about 38 days that being the wasp um she will arrive uh, with the battleship north carolina as well so that'll be nice to get our first sort of modern american battleship uh, um first american fast battleship to go with the uh british battle cruiser repulse in terms of care uh, battleships that can keep up with the carriers so anyway I think we'll probably jump to another game. Um, I just wanted to show kind of the situation here. I'm not sure if there's anything we're leaving out uh, before we jump over. Well, a very small number of base force troops starving west of uh, Port Moresby. I didn't see much in the way of uh, submarine activity this turn. It seemed pretty quiet other than the Japanese sub that uh, got us. So we did lose the MMSB, a one point worth of victory, victory point, one victory point, uh, a Dutch AMC. Oh, no. So this is a Dutch minesweeper. The captain was an ensign named Dorman. So does that, that in massively increases the likelihood that he's related to Von Dorman or whatever the, uh, the Admiral of, uh, Oh my goodness, I'm forgetting the abbreviation. They're in uh, Rangoon now, I think, right? Yeah, Abda. Although I guess we've given William Slim, we replaced him with William Slim, which is not who was commanding it originally. It was, uh, there's a Van Dorman guy in here somewhere. Although maybe he was just the fleet commander. So William Slim is commanding Abda. Can I see? Is there a leader pool? Uh, it doesn't look like it. That's the ship database. Okay. Dutch ships. He'd be commanding a cruiser, I believe. I clicked French, didn't I? Where are these guys? Perth? So if I go ahead and I form a new surface task force, 
Oh, we just make it with the Deroiter Dutch ship. Do I not have any Dutch admirals anymore? Like, what? Where did they go? I did not replace him yet. A AKA, he's or Elk Alka. He's on his way back. So the guy who fired all his torpedoes off is here. You'll notice the task force's name is Sack Skipper Incompetent. He is uh, on his way back to Pearl. It'll take him a little while, so he'll he'll enjoy the uh, privilege of command for a little bit longer until he arrives back with no ammo on his sub. I'm trying to think, and I don't know where he is in game, but... Carl Dorman is the, the admiral that I'm thinking of, and he commanded the scratch force of Australian, British, American, and Dutch ships that fought uh, in the uh, Java Sea, where the American cruiser Houston was sunk, uh, the British uh, Exeter was sunk, um, and then a number of other ships, a number of Dutch ships were also sunk. Uh, but his name was Carl Wilhelm, or, or no, William, sorry. <laughs> Carl William Frederick Marie Dorman was his full name. That is a hell of a name, by the way. But I don't really have much else to share today. So I, you know, hope you guys enjoyed this episode of War in the Pacific, Admiral's Edition, my Let's Play series against Hartwig. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.